Welcome to the Joost tutorial troubleshooting the Joost fifth wheel top plate. Today, we will address how to determine why a top plate will not couple correctly or will not uncouple. For evaluation and repair purposes, the top plate must remain on the brackets. The bracket pins remain secured. Do not remove or replace the top plate unless the casting is broken. Most field wear or damage is limited to the lock jaw, the cushion ring insert, the release handle, and the lever with bushing. We will focus on the three views needed to properly diagnose issues with a Joost fifth wheel. The first view is the top surface, the release handle, and the adjusting screw. The second view is of the underside of the top plate as viewed from the passenger side frame rail. The third view is of the lock mechanism with the lock tool engaged. View the top plate as it arrives. Pull the release handle and hang it on the release notch. Is the release handle straight or does the release handle appear bent forward or backward? If the release handle is bent, the lever with bushing may also be damaged. Depending on age and wear, there should be between 3 8 of an inch and 1 and 1 half inches of adjusting screw threads visible. If no threads are showing, the top plate has been maladjusted. To tighten adjustment, the screw must be turned counterclockwise. No threads showing indicates the adjusting screw was turned the incorrect direction. The lever with bushing may be damaged. If more than one and one half inches of threads are showing, the top plate is acting very loose. No more adjustment remains. The adjusting screw no longer contacts the wedge-shaped locking bar. Possible causes will be addressed next. Excess grease in the center recessed area of the top plate surface can migrate to the throat, causing the top plate to act loose. Remove excess grease in the center recessed area of the top plate surface. Do not remove grease from the raised trailer contact surface. Excess grease in the throat and locking bar channel area will cause the top plate to act loose when pulling a trailer. Remove excess grease from the throat and locking bar channel. Check the condition of the cushion ring insert. A worn or damaged cushion ring insert will create a loose adjustment condition. Replace any cushion ring insert that is damaged or worn into the O and the S of the Jost logo molded into the cushion ring insert. Wipe off the lock jaw to inspect for visible damage, deformation, or marring. The tip of the locking bar must protrude farther into the throat than the kingpin guide lugs located on each side of the top plate throat. During coupling and uncoupling, the trailer kingpin bumps the locking bar back to allow the release handle to rotate from the release notch so the top plate is ready to couple. The top plate is now ready to couple. The lock jaw is rotated to accept the trailer kingpin. The locking bar tip is held by the lock jaw. As the kingpin rotates the lock jaw, the double coil spring will snap the release handle, lever with bushing, and locking bar into place. If the locking bar tip does not protrude past the kingpin guide lugs, the lever with bushing may be bent and need to be replaced. From the passenger side of the tractor, look under the top plate to check the condition of the following items. At the release handle pivot bolt, the lever with bushing must be parallel with the underside of the top plate casting. The top plate remains on the brackets to replace a lever with bushing. Remove the lever with bushing and the locking bar together. Transfer the locking bar to the new lever with bushing and reinstall. If the tip of the lever with bushing is pointed up towards or down and away from the top plate casting, replace the damaged lever with bushing. The top plate remains on the bracket to replace the lever with bushing. Remove the lever with bushing and the locking bar together. Transfer the locking bar to the new lever with bushing and reinstall. At the locking bar pivot bolt, the lever with bushing must be flat. There must be one washer located between the lever and the castellated nut on each pivot bolt. The castellated nuts must be installed until the cotter pin can just be inserted. With the double coil spring disconnected, the pivot bolts must rotate freely. Lubricate the pivot bolts with aerosol penetrating oil as needed. Loose the castellated nuts as needed. Make sure both ends of the inner and outer springs of the double coil spring are connected. One end connects to the release handle eyelet aft of the pivot bolt. 
The other end connects to a casting lug located over the passenger side frame rail. The release cylinder clevis must connect to the release handle eyelet located beyond the lever with bushing. Confirm the release handle is flat and straight. The top plate remains on the bracket to replace the release handle. Use a lock test tool to engage the coupling. Make sure the release handle goes all of the way in and all locks are engaged. Confirm the kingpin has entered and rotated the lock jaw. Confirm the locking bar fully crosses the top plate throat. This lock jaw does not need to be changed. Use a lock test tool to engage the coupling. The release handle did not move. Visibly confirm if the kingpin has entered and rotated the lock jaw. The kingpin cannot enter this lock jaw. The lock jaw has been damaged. The squeezed opening is too narrow to allow the kingpin to enter. The damaged lock jaw must be replaced. The top plate remains on the brackets to change the lock jaw. Use a lock test tool to engage the coupling. The release handle did not go all of the way in. The secondary locks are not engaged. Visibly confirm if the kingpin has entered and rotated the lock jaw. The kingpin entered and rotated this lock jaw. The lock jaw has been damaged. The spread opening will not allow the locking bar to cross the throat. The tip of the locking bar is visible in the throat. The damaged lock jaw must be replaced. The top plate remains on the brackets to change the lock jaw.